Sometimes when constitutional amendments come, they have a large amount of statutory language that is also used to implement it. And I notice that this one doesn't have any. But as I read it, I find it fairly confusing. For example, when I read only a union of one man and one woman shall be valid, does, what does that have to do about sequential marriages? For example, does this void our no-fault divorce statutes? And I think it, if it does, you know, that it, if you won't, it doesn't say that only a woman, union of one man and one woman at one time or something. It kind of, as I read it, one implication could clearly be that that's it. You have one union of one man, and then that means that anything else that we've done in statute that disrupts that is, so I guess the author, I should ask that of the author, is that, um, is that a possible interpretation of this? And if not, why isn't it? If, if, how can you have an, a second union of a man with another woman if this is what the Constitution, remember, it's not a statute that we can interpret. This is what the Constitution says. Can you explain that to me? It doesn't bother me, because that's actually how I've lived my life. But, you know, <laughs> I imagine it would bother a lot of, I know it would bother a lot of other people who've, who have been in the legislature at various times from both parties. Um, and we do have a quorum, so I'll officially call the meeting to order. I will move House File 1613 and recommend it be passed to refer to the General Register. Representative Gottwald. Well, thank oh, you, I'm Minute. sorry, it's I going to rules. rules. Thank yeah. you for the clarification. Um, Representative Gottwald, if you'd like to uh, address Representative Kahn's question. Well, Madam Chair and Representative Kahn, I appreciate the question. Um, I would simply point out this language uh, that is before you uh, has passed in uh, 31 other states. Well, and I would also point out, Madam Chair, I, I believe we're in the Ways and Means Committee, and, and the discussion is, I believe, focused on the fiscal uh, implications, yeah. especially around the fiscal note. Well, Representative Kahn. Um, uh, uh, Madam Chairman, I actually carried the no-fault divorce. It was one of, because I carried it actually in my first term, and because um, they couldn't find any lawyers who were willing to do it at that time. But one of the things that we talked about was the big fiscal implications of that. There are large fiscal implications when you you know, when you mess up everything that's going on. I mean, at that point, we were changing everything that was going on in the divorce courts because it had, and it had a very positive fiscal, it had a positive, positive fiscal note in that divorces would be much easier, would take up much less judicial time, and that sort of thing. So if we go back on that, it seems to me that that messes it up and that it puts, so I would, and that it would, it would be, this would have passed, we would have, a lot more problems, problems in the courts, and so I just want to know, and I've said, usually, with most constitutional amendments that I've been aware of, like the last one, the legacy one, and the, certainly the environmental trust one, they came along with a large amount of statutory implementing language, and this doesn't have any, and, and shouldn't we have something that says, that we're not to take this literally, that we're not, we don't believe that only a union of one man and one woman is true, that we can have multiple ones as long as they happen one at a time. Or, you know, so, uh, um, you know, so I guess it's well, your bill, so I'm asking well, that. Rep Representative Kahn, current law in Minnesota prohibits uh, polygamy. I, I don't, I don't think we need additional statutory language. It's, Kind of a civil I, law I was talking anyway. Well, what this so. says, this implies to me, and, and unless he had statutory language which says that's not what it means, that you have a union of one man and one ma woman, and that's the only one that's valid or recognized as a marriage in Minnesota. So you can't have a situation. Uh, I don't know if you can have a situation where one dies and then you can also have a remarriage that's then a second woman or a second man, or if you could have a divorce and there could be two more put in there. I, you know, I, 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 and I think that that then becomes terrible confusion for the courts. So I, I, I'm just said usually, I mean, I've seen more statutory, I've seen, I don't think I've ever seen a statute, a constitutional amendment that had this little statutory language along with it. So I'm just 
trying to I'm trying to get what the interpretation is. The interpretation is that you don't intend to prohibit these other things. Then why don't you specifically state it? I guess the, the doesn't think it's necessary, Representative Khan. Are there any questions on the fiscal notes? Uh, 